Welcome back to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series brought to you by the Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Forest and Wildlife Research Center. I'm Bronson Strickland and I will be the presenter today. Uh, I'd like to also acknowledge my co-author Steve Damaris, colleague of mine and co-director of the MSU Deer Lab. Today I want to focus on all of the aspects of getting a, a place prepared to plant for food plots. What are all the things you need to do ahead of time, planting equipment, etc. So that's really what this presentation is about, is the background and preparation for a food plot system on your property. Another one of those things, one of those details that can end up making a big difference and that is for all of your legumes, they need to be inoculated prior to planting. And we'll go into a little more detail about this process in a moment. Um, but one thing that you hear a lot, and I think there's some merit to this, is that if you do this for several years in a row, so let's just say you have a particular area, a plot, you are going to plant it in cowpeas for the foreseeable future. At minimum, I would recommend inoculating those cowpeas for two years and then maybe try it on the third year and see how, how well they perform relative to the prior two years. Now, the reasoning behind this, why you may not have to do it every single time, is that the rhizobium bacteria, that's what you're doing when you're inoculating, you're inoculating the seed with a bacteria, uh, can be living in the soil after you've done it for a year or two. So this is definitely something if, if a particular uh, food plot forage species is new to that plot, new to your property, this is a process you're going to want to do, I would say, at least for two years and maybe try it on your third year, see how well it performs, and then uh, go from there. As I mentioned previously, the, the purpose for doing this uh, it's a very, very beneficial for the plant and it's very beneficial for you is that legumes can fix nitrogen. So through the soil, atmospheric nitrogen with the help of a bacteria, uh, most commonly a group of bacteria called rhizobia. But that is the reason you're doing this is the rhizobia and the legume, they have a, a symbiotic relationship here and uh, beneficial for both the legume is going to have the benefit of the bacteria fixing nitrogen and the, the plant is going to be able to use it. The bacteria benefits from the uh, carbohydrates. In other words, some of the food that is produced by the plant then benefits the bacteria. So that, that's the whole reason that, that you do that. And again, it's really important to, to you as a food plot manager, growth and yield is going to be greater. And it's going to save you money. If you plant a legume and then plant for, for warm season, a legume like a cowpea or a soybean and plant something like corn and then look at the, the nitrogen cost that you're going to have to pay for. So that this is really good for you in terms of saving money. You have to use the correct inoculant. I'll go through that in a moment, but all the different food plot forages, they're in different groups and all these different groups of plant will use a different inoculant. Make sure to keep it fresh. You certainly do not want to use something that's a year or two old. Remember, it is a living bacteria and so it needs to be treated accordingly and hence that is why you don't want to expose it to heat or sunlight for any extended period of time because it's going to, to kill the bacteria. This is just showing you what is going on beneath the surface of the soil and the roots. These uh, little circular, circular nodules, that is the effect. That, that is the bacteria at work, and that is what's going on. Those little nodules are what is fixing nitrogen, and it's attached to the root, and therefore that is how the plant can access that nitrogen. Now there's a, a lot of ways to do this. Uh, the, the process is pretty simple and just figure out a way that works for you. It's all going to depend if, uh, if you have a barn or shed on your property or if you maybe want to do this at your house and then transport the seed. But bottom line, all you're trying to do is you're taking that bag and it's typically the substrate there is, is some type of peat and the bacteria is in there. 
you are wanting to get that to adhere to each of your seeds. And so this is an example we're doing here with a, uh, a bag of, of cowpeas. And we have just laid a tarp out on the table. We're in, we're in a barn, so we don't have direct sunlight on us. And I'm just literally dripping uh, sugar water. And the reason I'm using sugar water, uh, I'm getting the seed a little bit moist, but the sugar is in there to make it sticky. And so you'll see here up close, you, you can see the, the remnants of, of the peat moss and the bacteria is in there. But I'm just using that little paddle, just moving the seeds around, smearing it all around and making sure that each seed is coated as best I can. What you'll also then want to do is, is let that dry. And so that's all going to depend on the wind and the heat and all this, that and the other. But typically, you know, half hour, hour, something like that, then the seeds are going to be dry or mostly dry. And that's when you're going to put them in your your popper or if you're planting it by hand, however, then you'll want to put it in the ground after that. I included this slide just to, uh, to show you the difference of scale between people like me that are planting food plots and those that are doing uh, at more of an agricultural scale. These are uh, some colleagues of mine from the Plant and Soil Sciences Department, and they're used to, to planting acres upon acres upon acres of soybeans. And the system that they do, you can see they have this big trash can here. They're putting in, it looks like one bag of a 50 pound bag of seed there, putting the inoculant on top. And they're using to get their sugar water, they're using uh, a soda. Some people don't like using soda. I do not have any personal experience to tell you do this or don't do this. But I've heard some people say that the pH of the soda may not be as good. I really can't tell you again because I don't have firsthand knowledge. I will say this. These guys are... Um, on the agricultural side and what they do works that's their job that's how they make their their living so obviously they are doing something right but they're just adding in the seed adding in a little uh i don't know what that is a sun kiss or something like that adding the inoculant and then just stirring it with a paddle and then moving the trash can around so that's how they do it just to give you another option this is an example just to show you most of the popular food plot forages. You see I've got white clover, red clover, air leaf, crimson, bursim, etc., etc., cowpeas, lab lab, soybean. All of these forages are in different groups and different groups will have a different inoculant and there's a, and there's a code. Notice B-O-R-C-E-L-S. Don't take it for granted that just because it's a clover it's going to use the same inoculant. You can see there that arrow leaf is take, using a different inoculant than red clover or white clover. And even with your warm season legumes, cowpeas and lab lab, they may look a lot like soybean, but soybeans will take a, a different inoculant. Another thing I wanted to point out, this is really common with your cool season legumes, and that is primarily clover. Most of those will come pre-inoculated now so that's why if you have experience planting clover in the fall and you have never done uh, this inoculation process we're talking about and ended up with a good stand uh, it was probably already the seed was likely pre-inoculated so but you see that less often I would even say you rarely see it with your your warm season forages so that is just something to be aware of an example of what it looks like. This is uh, your typical bag, very common for what I get around here. Uh, usually comes from this company. Uh, notice they're listing here inoculant for Alice clover or Elise clover, cowpeas, peanuts, Lespedeza. But notice here what I have circled at the bottom is they're saying this is the EL culture. So that's just something to look for when you go to buy this ahead of time, know what culture you need and then cross-reference that. Hopefully on the bag, it's gonna provide the, the actual name of the forage that you plan to plant.